Urban Radio Networks is with us to talk more about Tupac Shakur's life and legacy. Tanya, good afternoon and welcome to BNC and welcome back to you. Thank you. Thank you, first of all, for having me. And wow, I just I cannot believe it's been 25 years. Yeah. Just, you know, um, because he's still so present in his mm -hmm. music today is even more important and more poignant than it was when he was making it. Uh, we're looking at the same situations. And I just, um, I would just encourage people to go back and listen to some of his music today and to really think about what he had to say. He was a young man, way ahead of his time, and we yeah. still miss him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you said 25 years today, and it, it's crazy even in Sharon's story when she mentioned, and no one has ever been named his murderer. You know, so talk about this, Tanya. Tupac is considered one of the most influential and talented rappers of all time. Tell us about the impact that he had on the industry, and I would argue that he still has on the industry. I agree. He does still have on the industry because nobody really has that voice. No one has come along with that voice. Um, y you know, it's, it's interesting that no one has ever been charged. We all believe that the person who actually killed Tupac and Biggie had, were murdered themselves. You know, that was probably part of the way that package deal went down. Mm -hmm. um, and so we we won't find out. We won't. We may find out eventually who did it, but I don't think they're with us. They won't ever be prosecuted. Um, I do know that Suge Knight is in prison, and that even though he claims he had nothing to do with it, there is no way that you'll ever get me to believe that. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that he knows what happened. He was there. He was also shot. Uh, so I know he knows what happened and probably who did it. All of that being said, I do think that today is a good day, and any day is any day is a good day to listen to some Tupac in my book. I would also suggest that people look at our documentary. It's called Tupac Resurrection. We did this both been about oh, probably seven or eight years ago. It was nominated for an Oscar. It's one of the most watched documentaries ever on YouTube. So please check out Tupac Resurrection as well and you'll see Tupac is very I did his very first interview ever and that's what the uh, the Tupac resurrection documentary is all about and Tanya we watched the movies we watched you know the documentaries all these things detailing such a young icons life and you just mentioned this you had the chance to interview Tupac tell us about what that experience was like because I can only imagine being in a room with somebody with just such great words well, you know, it was the very first interview he had ever done. And uh, so, but he was so smart. He was so into the moment. Um, he was also very into social justice, which everybody is talking about now. He was not that much into his own publicity at the moment. When I first spoke with him, we got to know each other uh, over the, the next few years, and he became too much involved in, the, in what was being said about him and started believing it. And that's really that was really his big downfall. I do tell the story. It's very interesting. Just before they went to the Mike Tyson fight, I had set up a, a situation for he and Suge to actually come to church with me. Wow. I, I know it sounds a bit strange, but there was a big meeting going on over in South Central LA. It was like one of those old fashioned tent meetings. and It was on the property. I go to a big mega church, West Angeles. And so we said, oh, well, you know, why don't you all come and just check this out? Mm -hmm. It would be good. Just come. And we, and we set it all up. And, you know, it was going to be at security and everything for them. And they didn't show up and they went to Vegas to that fight. And that was kind of the end. Wow. It's crazy. I just wonder, were you in the room at that point praying for them to show up or even had prayed for them that day? Well, you mean when they went to the fight? Yeah. I was hoping that they would show up at church. I mean, I, you know, there was a lot of stuff involved, and a lot of stuff going on. And so we were really looking for them. I mean, we, we had people out there, you know, in our little areas where they have, because we always have a lot of celebrities come to our church and, but they, they just didn't show. And, and actually I heard from somebody from Suge's office right after that, just saying, oh, they they did apologize and said they couldn't make it, you know, okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, I get that. But anyway, I was hoping they would have been there and who knows 
maybe it would have been a good moment for his what was to end up being a very short life. Yeah, yeah, definitely could have been differently. So Tupac talked a lot about social issues, police brutality and violence in the inner cities. Do you think those themes are why his music is still resonating with audiences today? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I was saying. He was talking about social justice at a time when, keep in mind, I mean, we were leading up to the Rodney King situation um, and, and L.A. was really volatile as many cities were. I mean, this was, you know, the early 90s. And so it really you know it was really a time where we were seeing some of the same things that we're seeing now it really has not changed I mean, we go back 50 years we go back 80 90 years 100 years you know it's still the same thing it's still the same thing and and it does make you wonder at this point especially when we reflect on people's lives like tupac's life today it does make you wonder okay when are we going to be able to really turn the corner on this mm -hmm. because we're still in that same moment. We got to turn a corner. Got to. Mm -hmm. Well, he gave us Brenda's Got a Baby. My mom, uh, her name is Brenda as well. Uh, all of the greatest hits. And, you know, just today we're definitely remembering him. And hopefully one day, like you said, someone will be able to tell who is the one who killed him, even if they're no longer alive. Tanya, we want to thank you for your time. How would you say that your life has been? What would you say about your life? How would you define it? I would say it's been like a test on my faith. You know what I'm saying? You know how I guess his name was Job in the mm -hmm. Bible who God just did all this crazy stuff to him just to make sure his faith was straight. And that's how it was. It made me, if I didn't have all of this stuff, I don't think that my feet would have been so um, firm to where I could stand up for mm -hmm. anything, you know, and I would be um, less ready to deal with what's out there. Yeah. So. Let's talk a little bit about what happened to you when you were growing up. Uh, your parents were in the Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like their job. Yeah, it was my mother was, a, was in the Black Panther Party. She was like at a high position, which mm -hmm. was like unheard of because of course there was sexism, even in the Panthers. Mm -hmm. So, and my stepfather at the time, Matu Shakur, he was also like a well-known, like revolutionary, true. All, my, all of my roots to the struggle are real deep. Mm -hmm. And then my godfather, Geronimo Pratt, you know, he was like, had a, a top official rank position with the Panthers on the West Coast. Right, and we just mentioned he's, of course, serving a life sentence right now. Yeah. Your mom was carrying you when she went to jail true the first time. Uh, that's a very interesting story in itself. What happened to her? Why was she in jail? Because, like, you know, there's racism. So when the Panthers hit, the government panicked, and they had a thing called a Cointel Pro. And they felt like the Panthers were detrimental to American society, so they raided every Panthers house, especially the ones who they felt like could do the most damage as an orator. Mm -hmm. So my mother was nine months pregnant, no, seven months pregnant. They put a match to the door and said, fire, fire. And you know, it's like five in the morning, so my mother opened the door and they just burst in, put a shotgun to her pregnant belly, and put a gun to her head and said, don't move, bye, bye, bye. They said, you're under arrest. They treated them like less than humans. This is a pregnant woman. What do you think your parents were trying to accomplish in those days and with the movement? I think that my mother, like a lot of people, like a lot of them, like Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, uh, Harriet Tubman, they felt like they were laying tracks for the, the, the generation to come. My, I think my mother knew that freedom wouldn't come in her lifetime, just like I know that it won't come in mine. Hmm. But it's a matter of either we stay like this or somebody sacrifices, somebody lay a track so we don't stay in a 360 degree deadly circle. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Somebody has to break out and risk, you know, losing everything and being poor and getting beat down. But somebody has to do something. The best part of the story, I guess, is that your mother actually beat this rap. Ooh. Served as her own attorney? Her own attorney, never been to law school. She was facing 300 and something odd years. One black woman pregnant beat the case. Mm -hmm. I just go to show you the strength of a black woman and the strength of, of the oppressed. What does it do to a young man like yourself, though, when all of your heroes, your mother, your father, who has passed away, he, had, he was incarcerated as yes, well, uh, your, your godfather, all of your heroes have been to jail. And they weren't all Panthers. My father was a, I mean, my stepfather was a Panther. My father was a gangster. 
a straight up ignorant, you know, hustler. Mm -hmm. But he made, but he loved the fact that the Panthers, what he told, my mother told me is that it was a one night stand. But he loved the fact that the Panthers would go to jail and wouldn't snitch. Mm. They were true to each other, you know, as women, it was men. And that was a one night stand. That's how I came to be, you mm. know, out of the love for black people. So that's how I got to live and that's how I have to die. And that's how my music has to be and my acting and my producing and my interviews, everything has yeah. to be for the love of black people. Yeah. Uh, Valentino giving me suits.